And you would say that studying Gavi's works and words and deeds and his legacies have relevance now in terms of enabling us to do what you just said? Yes, I think studying his work enables us to um, deal with it. And I would identify two ways. One is the primacy of self-confidence. Oh, yes, sir. That is key because without self-confidence, you have lost you even can't before you have started. The Korea, South Korean ambassador to Jamaica earlier this year said that they learned from Garvey. Right? He made that. Ho Chi Minh did. Ho Chi Minh used to Chi come Min to Garvey's. Yes, exactly. They learned from him. So the self-confidence, which again relates to mental emancipation mm -hmm. and so on. And secondly, you have to have a stake in the global economy, which is yours. In a sense, Asia is now developing, and that has been since the 19th century with Japan, post-World War II, South Korea, and since the Southeast Asia, a whole challenge to Western economic dominance. Africa needs to have a perspective that goes into the 22nd century in terms of what we need to do foundation-wise now. And I think education becomes key, a think. key. Mm -hmm. And Gavi always stressed this. It, that's why he said, intelligence rules the world. And with the science and technological changes, again, you see the largest corporations are intelligence-based corporations. Right? Uh, whether you take Apple or you take social media, what have you, intelligence will always run things. So along that line, his course in African philosophy, based mm. on the course he did for the, the one course that he ran for his students mm -hmm. in Canada there, seems critical again for young African black students globally to be reading and studying reading this, and studying. To, to, mm. to begin mm -hmm. that process of self-development mm -hmm. that will lead mm -hmm. to all of these other yeah. outcomes. Yes, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so I, I, I think that is where the challenge, now the problem with the educational system in Jamaica elsewhere is that the educators themselves don't really understand Garvey. However, they have put Garvey into the civics curricula in at certain levels of the high school. In Jamaica. In Jamaica. And that is some form of some progress. Form of progress. Uh. Not enough. Uh, and that's why I believe in taking independent initiatives. Okay. And we did this with the Liberty Hall at 76 King Street in Kingston, under the leadership of the late uh, Dr. Donna McFarlane, creating, using the technology to create a multimedia museum. And over 80,000 children, school children, have gone through that multimedia museum. Okay. Uh, and also having outreach programs to the schools, providing lecturers, uh, but bringing them in and developing a series of films which relate to their sense of self. Donna McFarlane, one of the last films she did, she interviewed a lot of young women. And you'd be surprised to know the insecurities about their physical appearance. Yeah, that's why that bleaching exists. is still a problem in Jamaica exactly. and that's elsewhere bleaching. in the black world. So we're working on that. Uh, we also have a program every February which involves schools. Um, we had one with a Chicago school and a Kingston school mm -hmm. talking to each other about the issues they face mm -hmm. and introducing them to Garvey. And February 2019, we're doing something on the uh, with South Africa and apartheid dealing with the CAPE syllabus. Okay. We're working with the South African High Commission in that. And there are other people in the UNIA who are active in Jamaica. So initiatives have to be taken which enable the message of Garvey to be communicated 
outside of the educational system, which is a special job in and of itself, Chef, yeah. okay. right? Yeah. But again, and the musicians play their role, mm -hmm. uh, different generations, chronics, and that group very much continue what Burning Spear yeah. uh, did in the 70s. Yeah. And it's, it's there, the, the, the dub poets and others. So you have to have a multifaceted strategy. Where I think we are still weak on is in the, the, the economic message of Garvey. The economic message is, is not as strong, although there are changes here, but the Jamaican economy is still basically controlled by the same forces. And that's why you can have, as Carolyn Cooper has criticized recently, uh, policies in government which basically are privatizing Jamaica's beaches. Oh, gosh. Right? Uh, and there's a policy but to come up sometime this year which will be discussed by the public. But Jamaica has probably the most privatized beaches in the Caribbean. Right? And that is because um, we have given away much of these beaches to the moguls of tourism locally and the moguls of tourism from Spain that dominate Jamaica's tourism economy. And, and for anyone who might not understand what that means, that means sometimes for locals or people of a darker hue to gain access to the waterfront and the sea and the beaches is a problem for us in Jamaica. Yeah, it is a problem. It is a problem. The challenge is to work with the young people and therefore the outreach to the young people becomes very important to discuss where their head is at mm -hmm. and how the Garvey message can be uh, infused in the things that they are involved in. They are involved in social media, they are involved in cultural expression, Jamaica is very strong in that area and therefore the platforms for the Garvey message are more diverse now than they have ever been. So you have to get on those platforms in order to reach the younger people. You had introduced some courses on Garvey in your political science courses yes, at I the university? Yes, I introduced courses and these courses are still being taught. Okay. Um, when, when, when did you initiate that? In the early 90s, okay. early 90s. Um, what kind, of, what kind, of, what kind of resistance did you get to trying to start that? Um, I think I didn't have much resistance in terms of the academic mm -hmm. boards that I had to put the courses through. didn't have much resistance. I didn't have much resistance from the students. And at the turn of the 20th, 21st century, a group of students called, the Marcus, called themselves the Marcus Garvey Movement, led by somebody from Flankers, Alan Bernard. And uh, they developed a whole series of student activism around Garvey, the likes of which have not been duplicated. And those students who are now in their late 30s are now, one is a publisher, Latoya Blackwood West, and she calls herself Hashtag Garvey Girl, very active on issues having to do with publishing, the, on children and on young women. Uh, people like Alan Bernard continue to work in inner city communities. Um, Gavin Myers also, who works with the National Integrity Action and is involved in projects. So, they are all active in different communities in Jamaica and some are outside Jamaica. So I regard the course that I did and the impact on particular that group as bearing seed in terms of their future. That group raised money to have conferences in Namibia and in South Africa. When you know it's not easy to raise money to get a group of students into these places because of the cost. But they went out, raised the money, and did their Pan-African student conferences in these locations. So that 
for me was the highlight of the product of being in and among the students and teaching them. So it was not only inside the classroom, it was outside interacting, being a kind of guide to them, talking. And of course, there are plenty of quarrels. And in discussing Garvey, it's not going to be a smooth sailing because the Garvey legacy is challenging a lot of things that all of us grew up with and were socialized in. Because, you know, re-socializing yourself out of those things. Chal challenging the Eurocentric status quo. Exactly, exactly, you have found the vocabulary that's appropriate for that. Challenging mm -hmm. our Eurocentrism. So the course continues by Hutton. Uh, when Hutton retires, I don't know. You know that, that's up to Professor Clinton Hutton. 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 Professor Clinton Hutton. Okay. Um, that would be that would be his his challenge. And others have gone on to academic um, positions in North America here and elsewhere, but my interest is in those who are at home to try to uh, ensure that they engage in what is a difficult environment to, but nevertheless an environment that is not only challenging but also full of prospects. But speaking of a difficult environment, are you disappointed? Um, in the regression, in the cultural and political, in the seeming regression in political and cultural consciousness as exhibited in the music of Jamaica yeah. and other aspects of life. Yes, um, but I understand that this is part of a wider neoliberal change that from the centers down to now has taken place throughout the Caribbean so, and the world throughout the Caribbean and the world including Africa mm -hmm. so you're dealing with global systems and therefore you can't tackle global system only on the base of an island you have to tackle it within the systems itself and the countries and therefore the outlook that you have to have is not really something that can be shaped on an exclusively nationalist platform like the Jamaican and the Trinidad yeah, definitely and the Cuba not. And yes, and yes. This and that. Yes. It is the networks that you need to develop on a global basis that enables you to understand the system that you call. it's not easy, it's not simple. So it's, it's a challenge all the while that you have to deal with so that you don't lose yourself in one particular aspect, aspect of the structure. You could exhaust yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you could exhaust yourself in a local struggle mm -hmm. at the ex and you know, recognize that we're holding it down is bigger than that. Right? In other words, your adversary is not who it may appear to be.